My name is uh, Seo Chang. I'm a CTO at Infineon. Um, this talk, we're going to talk about how uh, WebAssembly uh, powers our uh, Fluby open source project. Okay. For agenda for this talk, we'll start with the uh, overview of a Fluby project. And then we're going to challenges we encounter while building a Fluby a project that we are trying to solve. Um, spoilers ahead, we think the WASM is a really powerful solution to uh, our challenges. Lastly, we'll talk about the future directions. Okay. Fluvio is an open source event streaming platform. Uh, we open source in 2019. Uh, Fluvio is uh, written in Rust and designed as a cloud native platform from the ground up. We have, basically the platform does is it collects event from consumers and the producer, and then it stores and process to the consumers and then connectors. Uh, we have, the producer can be written in a main language such as JavaScript, and Python and Rust, of course. The connectors that we have can collect the data source from other database or a different variety of other platforms such as Kafka. Uh, the Bluefield platform can persist those events and dispatch to consumer other data sinks. Okay. So why build a platform for the event streaming. Um, now, before we can talk about event streaming, uh, we need to discuss the, one of the most significant trends in the world right now. The, we defined the trend that matters to us is what we call building a real-time economy. Uh, this is where the business process and value chains are entirely digitized and connected. We have made progress in a lot of digitization, as you can see on AG devices, converting a paper uh, process to a digi uh, digital formats. The challenge is the second part, the connected. It is where the trillions of dollars will be made or lost. And the most important part of the connector is latency. For example, the Uber as a business wasn't possible until we figured out how to route the right request to other drivers in real time. It is no longer options to wait for hours or days to connect the data. Either you adapt to the real time economy or perish. So what are the challenges of trying to connect this uh, data? The biggest issue is existing data processing paradigm. We're using request and response model. Uh, in that model, you basically persist the data into some kind of storage device or a database, and then you make request and response from the application. The most existing backend and microservices are done in this way. Uh, the problem with the request and response model is they are very inefficient. It takes minutes or hours to process this data and get, and get to the app. Uh, this paradigm is also known as a data at rest. And it assumes the natural state of data is at the rest which makes it very difficult to reduce the latency since it's hard to move things at rest. Okay. So how do we make a progress? The, pro the, way, the better way to approach is to move to what you call approach called data in motion, which assumes that instead of moving, instead of having a data at rest, Let's make a data move always. 
this improves efficiency and also it maps to a lot of natural asynchronous oil processing. The, the best approach for uh, data in motion is, is done through what's called stream processing. And one way to visualize this is, is just like flowing the stream of water, where the data kind of represent the water, and we have a processing steps in, that can transform data in any way that should, we need to do. Okay. The best part of the data stream, the stream process is, is a composable. You can filter or map or combine into other streams. You can split them and you can merge it and into many different shapes. And also, it is very functional, which means that this is where a lot of developers find easier to, ha uh, to have mental constructs. Okay. So you are convinced that data motion and streaming process is the best thing in the world. However, there's no free lunch. Moving data is going to be very expensive. Here's uh, one map of visualizing the AWS uh, transit cost. This is how AWS makes money from you. Uh, and your, your uh, CFO you know, uh, have a very interest in, in digging into this, uh, these numbers. Now, anything beyond the BPC will cost you dearly. Now, it gets worse as you transfer to H to NAT gateway or NRB and uh, to various different proxies. So it can be very expensive. And if you don't carefully model your costs on your microservices or the databases, it can be a very uh, difference between successful project or or you're uh, shutting down your business. Okay. Now, let's typically look at other stream, existing stream process, how they've done it. They typically have some kind of ingest streams that collects the data and put that into different processing, um, such as the filtering. Now, the ingest stream can compress into smaller data set, but still is somewhat similar magnitude. Now, the problem is that this network, the large network, is going across the network. And, and those network processing, as you can see on before, it can be really expensive. And you have to be very considerate to uh, architectural networks such that it's very cost efficient and reduce latency. Okay. The next, there is a security problem. Whenever you are moving data across the network, it gives the potential for a network or the hackers and other um, entity to, to steal your data. Uh, the zero trust model assumes there's no basically secure or trusted network. You have to have a mind of that, then your network is inherently insecure. And the more data you move, and the faster you move, the harder it is to secure, secure those data. Okay. So how do we solve this problem? So, so basically, the solution is to, to actually reduce the data movement. And one way to do it is that instead of moving the data, we reduce the data by moving a compute to near to the store as much as possible or to the source of data. And we leveraged power compute to reduce the data to small as possible. And the most low, with the power most low, the compute and computer is getting faster while your network is not getting that much faster. So by doing that, we're saving the bandwidth and reduce the latency uh, at the same time, saving the costs and increase the reliability. And 
And since data is so small, it's much easier to audit and enforce the security policies. Okay. So now let's go back to this previous example and see how we solve this, the problems we encountered previously. So instead of sending stream data to another, another node, we can actually combine into a single uh, in a node where we process the data and, and only send out the uh, data that makes sense for the downstream uh, uh, stages. Okay. So in this example, we actually gain factor of 50 to 1 reduction in, in bandwidth. And I'm sure your uh, CFO will love that. And if the network is go over to the AG devices, the savings, of course, increases. Uh, we call this approach called smart stream processing, where instead of having a stream to be kind of dumb pipe, we en enhance by adding intelligence uh, do more to make this one network efficient. Okay. Now, with the edge devices, the smart streaming can be even more powerful. So one of the biggest issues dealing with IoT devices which is large data volumes. IoT device doesn't usually have a reliable or fast connections. It's not feasible to ship all the raw data to cloud for processing. It'll be too expensive and that just takes too long. With the smart streaming, we can move data processing in the edges and move the only developer data to cloud for the further analysis. Okay. Now to enable smart streaming, we need a computer infrastructure with following properties. First, it needs to be portable, so we can move to support different uh, CPUs such as ARM32 or a powerful uh, compute uh, servers like Intel AMD. Next, it needs to be efficient to minimize energy to run a small devices. Third, it needs to be able to sandbox such that it can be run in any environment. Uh, and the lastly, it needs to support different languages. It's no longer uh, too sufficient to just support a single language or a single set of, uh, set of language-related uh, families. Of course, you know the answer. We believe that the WASM or WebAssembly is truly what we call movable compute. The, the existing the compute uh, platform is, doesn't provide isolation and security guarantees that we require. Uh, virtual machine is just basically too, too heavy. And it doesn't provide portability. The, the containers are much better, but it doesn't provide a true isolation because there's a lot of money spending on trying to lock up the containers. Um, the other, the traditional approach of moving to the jar offers port portability, uh, but you know, very, very tied to Java virtual machine. And it doesn't provide actually the true isolation. So WebAssembly technology is a game changer by providing true isolation with the portability. It is better tested because everyone not running on every browser. With WebAssembly, now we have opportunity to move compute to anywhere. And this is the new type of infrastructure that we can advantage to, to move everything to the data in motion. Okay. The bigger picture is that the portability and isolation provide to allow us to reshape our compute infrastructure and, and data stack by flattening into what we call unified stack. Instead of having to think of a separate compute and data stack, we can think of it as just a unified stack. This stack can go from edges to cloud, 
can span uh, continents, can span uh, to different locations, or even to, even to space. And it allows to disaggregate a lot of existing monolithic uh, um, microservice um, or data stack and create a lot to compose different, um, more flexible uh, stacks for our needs. Okay. So now let's go into how Fluvio leverages WebAssembly. Uh, Fluvio combines streaming processing with the powerful WebAssembly modules, which we call smart module. Uh, and Fluvio used the uh, smart module as a fundamental part of uh, its platform. The Fluvio has the part of a platform is control plane, which actually distribute this smart module into different parts of platform. You can move the smart module to the connector that we can trans which you can transform a very different protocol into uh, shapes necessary for further down into streams. It can also uh, go into our the main the streaming process unit where you can actually transform the stream into or merge them. And lastly, it can also power the, our consumer, which can be other edge devices. For example, IoT devices. It can be drone or it can be autonomous vehicles. Now, we go further into how Fluvio use WASM to how compute the underlying streams. Uh, smart module itself is very opinionated WebAssembly module optimized for streaming process. Now we want to have smart module to make to be easy as possible for developers to write. So we abstract out the smart modules to very simplest uh, constructs. The green box is where the smart modules are in relation to the rest of uh, WebAssembly uh, modules. Um, the, the blue on the left side is the store binding. This is where the smart module intersect, intersect with the, the data from the store. Now the store can be different types of um, implementation. It can be a file, it can be EBS or S3, or it can be a storage array. The regardless of the storage devices, the store binding basically abstract out into a unified API. And then we layer on top of that Rust API to, of course, to give us the API in terms of WebAssembly module. And then, and then we have, we are working on different language bindings to expose that into different language, such as assembly script or Python and other possible languages in the future. Okay. So this is example of writing uh, this filter in Rust. Okay. Um, and this is a simple example of filter that filter out the records based on whether they contain, you know, letter A. Okay. Now, the, we, the interesting part is that we're using uh, the, the Ross's language constructs called uh, procedure macro to basically annotate them to indicate that what kind of binding we, we want to perform. So in this case, of course, the filter. Okay. The next, this is the Rust API signature, and it provides the filter, and then it has only one single argument, the record. So the record is the, basically the primitive, the basic constructs are the storage, the bindings. Um, it can either uh, return Boolean, true or false, if it satisfies the criteria, or it can return the exception, 
the, the result type is the Rust equivalent to indicate that the, if this exception occurs. Okay, and then um, so this allows to provide a uh, same API for a same storage bindings. Okay, next. This is where we convert the binary records into a string. Um, because the Fluvial stream can handle any arbitrary data, you need to convert it into a basic data type for uh, processing. Okay? And the lastly, of course, is a simple expression to indicate that if the string contains A or not. Um, now, Note that the user doesn't have to worry about how to encode and decode. It's basically, it's done through this uh, wrapper that the procedure macro that generates all the glue routines. It's done by uh, smart modules uh, framework. Okay. Now, let's more further go down into how actually binding that stores in, with the smart module. Uh, by default, the Fluvia streams are stored in a pen-only file system. They are immutable. The streams could be stored also in different file system, depends on infrastructure. Um, the regardless of implementation, the streams are uh, considered as immutable and ordered. Uh, for file system implementation, these records are group in a batches. So when we actually send these records to uh, Fluvial smart modules, the entire the records, group records, is read in a single batch. And this, in this case, the, rec the group, the batch group, starts at file offset 1,000 and to five pointer 1,200. So in you know, one single shot, you'll read those file contents and, and, and send over to those smart modules. Okay? So first, what it does is it copies this, the blobs of memory into WASM uh, memory block. And then it increments the last, the read position. Okay? Next. It, now the copying of binary a blob into WASP is actually turned out to be quite interesting challenges. Um, at the time, um, when we were building this initial implementation, the WASM, the reference type, and the other spec was, was very uh, working in um, very stage. And there was much of a uh, way to uh, looking at the implementation and the documentation was, was very skimpy. So the approach was, by look, uh, was uh, suggested by uh, someone else that was encountering the same problem. So the way you do it is you actually implement airlock and dealloc in the WASM. And you invoke this airlock uh, function to create a space in a WASM memory space, and then you copy those blobs into the WASM memory space. Of course, when you are done, those blobs must be deallocated. Okay? And then af after we copy these uh, memory blocks into uh, WASM memory space, then we deserialize into Rust structure so the Rust program can uh, perform uh, filtering functions. Now, the actually, this is not normal filter function. Um, this actually, the filter function is, is actually part of a map filter uh, function because what happened is, is that the outer, the map filter, uh, take those filter result and uh, copies the successful uh, records that satisfy criteria. And this actually uh, makes, it easy, uh, di makes it easier to implement it. Uh, other way to do is, uh, another way to do is to pass this uh, result 
uh, true and false back into host and do another processing. But this turned out to be much easier and, and that's also uh, creates a unified pipeline. Okay. Next. Okay, and then we copy, after we copy this, uh, uh, filtering these records, we send back to the host SPU, and then we send back to the downstream consumers. Okay. Does, the next binding is, is a map. And it's very similar to record, except it can transform from one shape to a different shape. And, and because uh, we share the same logic as the filter map, it's a, essentially the same process. Okay. Now, these previous bindings are very similar. The next binding, uh, aggregate, is different. With the aggregate, we maintain the interim state to pass back the state back to the smart module to do further processing. So with aggregation, you can implement things like sum, average, mean, and max. Okay. And this is a list of our discrete bindings that we implemented. Uh, we have things like uh, array map, which is placed the records into uh, multiple different records. Now, we have implemented this for basic use cases, but there are so many more uh, interesting use cases there that we are working on uh, in the future. Uh, the very good example is a join, which is ability to combine multiple streams based on some criteria. Um, other is windowing, which allow to process records in basically time-based functions. Um, other interesting use case is a key value, which allow it to uh, process the records in, in terms of key and values. This is very critical for a lot of uh, microservices and business logic. And then there's a materialized view, which allow you to cache values for subsequent access. And then the transaction support which use combined with external process to build some long-term uh, workflow. Um, if you are interested in supporting other store bindings or, or different ideas, please reach out, please participate in you know, uh, Fluvia projects. Okay. Now, as you can see, the current Store binding is done in very simplistic manner. So we are looking into using the, the, the new uh, capabilities of uh, WebAssembly, such as a reference type, WASI, and of course the component model to link to process these records and the stream in much more efficient manner. To allow, uh, this allows to build a sort of a zero cost stream processing, and to efficiently process this data over the network more efficient way. Okay. So Fluby is still a young project, but we think with the power of WASM, we can make the stream process easier and can be used everywhere. Um, here's a list of project docs and where you can get it started. Um, and contributions are always welcome. Okay. That's it. Yes, we, are, we have a very, um, uh, the question was, I guess, uh, is it work like a Kafka? That's uh, the reliable, yes. So currently we implement uh, at least once 
and we are working toward to implementing exactly once in the future. Well, we think uh, we I think um, uh, we think uh, our streaming process allows to build a, uh, a lot more use case than the Kafa does, and of course, uh, you know, being in Rust and we allows with the WebAssembly, we can actually spread the stream process to edge devices where the Kafa doesn't. Uh, because uh, being in Rust, for example, um, our the memory reduction is pretty much over one tenth of of uh, Kafa. Uh, because with uh, Rust, we don't have to uh, have a garbage collection, so you don't need to do a lot of um, maintain this extra overhead. Okay. All right. Thank you.